Hello and welcome to Blue Harvest Toys. On today's video we're going to be taking a look back at mail order catalogues. Nowadays what with eBay and our click and collect Amazon next day delivery it's easy to forget at one time things weren't so readily available. In many instances they weren't available at all. I can well remember a boy bringing a Hot Wheels car into school and all of us wondering what it was and where we could get them. Compared with today the media was far more limited so if you didn't see anything advertised on TV or in the press you had little idea of its existence unless of course as above you had a chance encounter. First hand exposure to toys would of course be those in the nearest town or city. Our market town had all the main outlets at the time, Woolworths with its oddball imports, your independent retailers and market stalls. And the place I remember most fondly is the department store GMB's which was in Dewsbury. Most of these retailers offered an eclectic mix, if often incomplete range of toys. Also very popular at the time were the mail order catalogues that allowed payment by instalments, thus spreading the cost. My mother and I would pore over these catalogues trying to make out what was being offered via the postage stamp size of pictures and sparse descriptions. Added to this, my parents would sometimes substitute things, not always for economic reasons, purely out of convenience. For example, if I picked out a Matchbox gift set, they might later spot a similar copy and think no one, least of all me, would notice the difference. As my mate recounted, if there is one life lesson in humility, it is opening what you believe to be the holy grail, only to find that it's a cheap knockoff from Hong Kong. So then, what were all these great toys we missed out on? Well, I managed to get my hands on a Marx and Johnny West Chief Cherokee. This famous range of Wild West archetypes was notable for its well-modelled figures and copious accessories. I successfully put in a request for a teepee to go with him and later a horse and never saw any more of the range in the store, which today will probably be shut down on the grounds of diversity deficit. Micronauts, the time travellers from Airfix, were widely advertised at the time and I went looking for them but to no avail, so when I was offered one for swaps I gladly handed over some action men rifles to one of my mates. He had probably visited some out of town toy mecca near Leeds to acquire it, so it was quite a score. It was also about the same scale as the later Star Wars figures and though it pains me to say, better articulated and modelled. Matchbox must have had total agency in our area, as apart from a weak showing of Corgi Juniors, that seemed to be it. At least that's what I thought until strolling through the co-op, seemingly forgotten toy department, where I stumbled on upon a French outpost. There were majorettes of course, each sold inside a plastic cage, which doubled for a garage. Exotic? Well, you don't find Citroen DS ambulances every day, that's for sure. As for the Hot Wheels, there was still no sign. Logistics as far as toys were concerned was another 1970s bugbear where a shopping these days involves just sitting at a computer scrolling through a warehouse inventory. Back then we may have had to travel from one end of town back again in the hope of finding what we wanted. It made the catalogues available in store look like nothing much more than a government propaganda. This seemingly haphazard style of retailing did throw up some occasional jewels. One Christmas I managed to bag both the Denny Fisher Mutant and Cyborg dolls from a bargain basket for £1.50 each. Likewise an Action Man scale motorbike and sidecar by Cheryl Lee was seized on in a discount store. That was a lot of play value for your money. So much for the good old days, parents today don't know how good they've got it. A bit of internet surfing while watching Strictly uh, a couple of days later the Christmas list gets delivered onto the doorstep in plain boxes. No tears, no freezing cold feet, no agony of indecision. I don't know how they manage it. Uh, speaking of pain, I wouldn't sign off without mentioning Palatoy's famous talking Dalek. The local shop had in fact held a full consignment of them, only to run out just before Christmas. That was all I wanted, one talking Dalek. And that is why I am still looking for the toys I did and didn't get as a kid and why I do this channel. So please like and subscribe and until the next video, when the toys be with you.